front page of Gazzetta sums it up quite nicely. Derby Scudetto, Milan and Inter, of course, leading the title race at the moment, first and second, respectively, as we go into Christmas. Uh, Milan one point ahead at the top of the table. To discuss this a little more, Gab Marcotti and Matteo Benetti with us. Gab, who's your money on? Who's, which of the Milan's going to win it? I think there's, uh, there's a lot of twists and the turns in the race. Dan, um, there's a long season. It's a season unlike any other. I'm not sure it's going to be one of these two, but if you're making me pick between one of these two, as of right now, I might just lean Inter. But, but it's very much a toss-up, and it could well be somebody else. Inter, are you going for them as well, Matteo? Strangely, I agree with Gab. Uh, it, it must be something weird in the air, but I do, because... Inter don't have European football now. They have all their eggs in the Serie A basket. And it is a deeper team with more experience than Milan. It's hard to think that Milan could continue what they've started in the first half of the season in 2021. Although the biggest thing is Milan are going to be in the top four. And I think they're going to challenge for the Scudetto. But as Gab said, there's still Napoli. There's still Juventus. You can't count a few other teams out. This isn't just a two-horse race between the two Milan-based clubs. How incredible is this run that they've put together, Matteo, considering the lack of expectations around pretty much this whole squad? It's the most amazing thing. It really is. The youngest average team in Serie A, just Zlatan Ibrahimovic, who some people said was just coming over for PR. He comes in, he scores basically a goal a game, and him and Stefano Pioli, there's finally continuity. There's a proven winner in the locker room. And there's something that Pioli said after the Lazio game, which I found interesting, is that the fact that there's no fans at San Siro has actually helped out a lot of the young players where maybe they didn't feel the pressure that having 85,000 people packing would give them. You know, it's those pre-match jitters that every player will feel before they line up at San Siro, and they haven't really had that. So they've been playing a little bit more carefree is the sense that I got. But this has been a long time coming, Dan. There's been a lot of disastrous seasons mm. in the last seven campaigns. No direction, overhyped, overpaid, overrated players coming in, zero continuity, new managers every six months. This is a real welcome change. The fans this, of the second most successful team in European competitions in the Champions League, they finally finally have something to celebrate. It's about time. And, and all those disasters, Gab, lead to this kind of being even more remarkable. Yeah, because, uh, you know, they had to dig themselves out of a hole. They had to dig themselves out of this situation. Uh, and, and I think it's really worth emphasizing what they've done here. Um, you know, Two owners ago, it was the end of the Silvio Berlusconi era. Uh, obviously, uh, delivered all those European Cups. Also left a mountain of depth uh, of debt behind. Sold the club to a snake oil salesman named Lee Yong Hong, who, <laughs> who, who ended up uh, defaulting on his loan. And then ended up with, and then we ended up with, with these owners who were, you know, it's a hedge fund. It's the people who loaned the money to Lee Yong Hong uh, originally. Maybe they thought that, you know, oh yeah, this guy's going to default. We'll get a cheap asset, whatever it is. They inherited an enormous slew of bad contracts, of old players, of debt, of overpaid players. Some of these issues are still there in the team. Hakan Shalanoglu and Gijo Donnarumma, who've been critical to their success this season, you know, both these guys are in enormous contracts. Their contracts are expiring soon. Me don't have a tough call to make. Um, the fact that they were able to move beyond that, move beyond some of the mistakes that this administration made from Leonardo to, 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 to Piontek to, to Lucas Paqueta, um, this was huge. The fact that they were able to move beyond the fact that they had all the ex-glories, all the ex-players of the past in the background sniping, some sniping from inside the club, like Zonalini Boba and saying, we need to spend money, you guys are cheapskates, blah, 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 ignoring the new reality. Um, this is really, really big, uh, what they've been able to achieve so far. Now, the trick is, can it last till the end of the season? And how will they handle uh, Shalanoglu, but of course, especially Gigi Donnarumma? Matteo, who's the first name on the team sheet for you between Zlatan and Teo Hernandez? 
<laughs> it has to be Zlatan, but Teo Hernandez is a close second. The thing about Teo Hernandez is, and along with a lot of the other young players that Milan have signed, they're signing these players off the bargain bin. Milan isn't going to be able to compete with teams that have these newly rich owners that are able to be in the Champions League, get the funds from that competition. So Milan have to search for players that have upside, but for that whatever reason, it didn't work out. Teo Hernandez, it didn't work out for him at Real Madrid. He was sent on loan to other clubs in La Liga, and he's come to Milan when Real Madrid basically said, you know what, we have enough fullbacks, it's fine, we'll sell him 20 million. In Euro. And he's improved because you can develop these players. He has world-class pace. He's got an excellent shot. And Milan have made him an actually decent defender now. Pioli was saying it just yesterday that this guy's improved on his defensive ability. Tactically, he's picking things up. So they're actually creating right now what is potentially the best left back in Europe. And they only got him for 20 million euro, which is remarkable. But Zlatan Ibrahimovic, he's the first name if he's healthy. There's no, uh, to me, there's no argument there. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.